welcome Apostle Jeff Englehart as he concludes our series entitled All In, Giving Your All for Christ. Good morning. Good to see you all today and on this great holiday weekend. And um, so glad that you joined us here today in the theater and those that have joined us online. We are concluding our series today on going all in. I know, that, I know you're disappointed about that, but uh, today's our last service on uh, going all in. But just before we start the before we start the sermon today, I just want to remind you, um, they're going to show the next slide up here. Also, Nate and Corey are going to be here next Sunday with us, and it's going to be a good time. Um, if you don't know too much about Apostle Nate and, and Corey, his wife, they do, um, they do ministry sessions, about two-hour ministry sessions. If you're going to a counselor, I'll tell you what, more will happen in this one two-hour session with them then it takes a, a regular counselor two months to do. I guarantee it. And um, if you would like one of those ministry sessions with either Apostle Nate or his wife, Corey, then uh, please see Pastor Darlene today. Uh, she's the one down here in the wheelchair. Just wave at us. There you go. And um, it's mom. Yeah, just see mom, and, uh, and she'll schedule you for one of those sessions. They're, they're flying in Thursday from Dallas, and uh, they're going to be here for... Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and so uh, make sure to, to uh, fill up that chart for them and find freedom. Amen? You've heard me say before, though, that we all go through sozo. Sozo is a Greek word that actually means that we're saved, we're delivered, and we're healed. Every believer goes through a, a time in their life where there's salvation. Amen? And then there's times that, that there are deliverances that are happening because there's, there's how many know you get junk in your trunk? Huh? There's just stuff that happens and things accumulate. There's lies that you come to believe, and they're there to help you walk through those things and dispel those lies and get it cleared out of your life. And so uh, it's going to be good, and I'm excited about next Sunday's sermon. Apostle Nate always brings a good word, and he's quite a preacher, isn't he? Amen. So, well, it's Memorial Day weekend, and I know that some people are, are firing up their grills and they're getting excited. I saw other people at Home Depot yesterday getting wood chips and landscape stuff and all that great, you know. And um, I know you get excited about yard work too, don't you? And, um, but I realize that in, in the midst of all the hoopla, and I know the teachers and students are excited because they get Monday off. Yeah, I know my son's excited. And, um, but in the midst of all that, I think we, we sometimes forget the real reason for the holiday. And the real reason for the holiday is that men and women laid down their lives so we could enjoy the cookouts, so we could enjoy going to church, freedom, so we could enjoy going to the store and picking out whatever we want, freedom. Going wherever we want to go, whenever we want to go, it's freedom. And they gave their lives for that. I just want to take a moment today, and, and if you are um, in active service, or, or maybe that you, you've been in active duty before, you've served in the military, would you just please stand? We just want to recognize you this morning. Come on, Carol. I know you're there. John, Bob. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, each one of you, for your service. We appreciate your service to our country. Thank you so, so very much. And um, it's, um, we live in a politically charged culture sometimes, don't we? And um, I remember what George Washington said. He said, may the country never develop parties. I love history. Go back and read history. He said, may, may the country never develop parties because then it'll split the nation. Boy, was he right. Wasn't he right? Aren't you glad that God's not a Democrat, nor is he a Republican? Nor is he independent? Huh? He is, he is in and through all those things. But I, I want to read to you today from 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. And I, want to, I just want to lay some groundwork, first of all, before we go into this. Because not only do we live in a politically charged nation, but in 1 John, when John was writing these, these chapters... The church was struggling with issues of their day. Matter of fact, they needed direction, so the author of 1 John gave the basic instructions. Basically, he wrote that it was not their task to figure out the precise and exact position on political nor moral issues. 
I'm going to say that again. It, was their, it wasn't their exact position on political nor moral issues. And you think, well, what's the church stand for? Isn't it supposed to be the moral issues? Nope. It's supposed to be love. That's your, that's your issue. That's the issue that we're supposed to focus on, is love. Jesus said, many times, he said, love as I have loved you. And then he also said, and do unto your neighbors as you'd have them do unto you. Isn't that right? So treat other people with love and respect as well. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, it says this. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. I'm just going to give you three quick things this morning. And the first one is, there are many forms of laying your life down by going all in. But the first one is this. I must first of all submit to him. I must first of all submit to Jesus Christ. As I submit to Jesus Christ, things begin to transpire and happen in my life. Just as Pastor Rick said, today's Pentecost Sunday. And I was reading, this past week I was reading some things and and I came across this article that John Hagee wrote and, and I just liked it and I want to read it to you. It says, many people today suffer from serious eye problems. They have a chronic condition that plagues their everyday lives. It manifests in some persistent symptoms the way that I want it, the way that I see it, the way that I think, the way that I feel, the way that I want to do things. Christians often trip over the I issues. Real unity requires real sacrifice But I is the enemy to unity. I demands its own way. I refuses to budge. I never prefers one another. I is only interested in his own comfort on a personal agenda. I like that. It just puts things back into perspective that, you know, when we're focused on ourselves, we have selfish desires and selfish motives. But when we start focusing our attentions on other people, to help other people, um, I was, often, I was often amazed at, um, at my grandpa. Some of you got to know my, my dad's dad, Grandpa Englehart. And after my grandmother had, had been in the nursing home for about uh, eight years and she passed away, he continued to go back to the nursing home because he made friends there. He continued to go back to the nursing home and he'd go visit for one hour Monday through Friday. He'd go th- Monday through Friday and go visit for one hour. And it it somehow gave him purpose. He lived to be 92 years old. And there was just some type of purpose in him that drove him that when he got up in the morning, had 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 his eggs, bacon, toast, I mean, all the cholesterol things you can imagine. And, uh, And after he beefed up on all that, he got into his car and he would drive all the way out to Bay Medical Care Facility and he'd make his rounds and visit people, joke with people. I can almost see my dad doing something like that. But, uh, but he was going around and, and, and talking to people. There was something about investing his life in other people that filled his time and it gave him joy. When you're only focused on yourself, what begins to happen is we only see what's right in front of us, what's all around us right here. We begin to focus on our aches, our pains, our trials, our tribulations, our problems. And, and everything just is right here. But when you begin to focus and your attention's bigger on other people, you begin to share the love of Christ with other people. So the very first one is that I must submit to him, Jesus Christ. And Paul warns Timothy to be certain that the church leaders are not self-willed and in, in Titus 1, 7. And then Peter warns against the false teachers who are self-willed, insolent, egotistic, who despise true authority. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 through 11, it kind of talks about false prophets and their prey. It says, this is especially true. Oh, you can go. Where am I? There we go. So it, in, in, in 2 Peter, go to 2 Peter. There we go. 2 Peter, it says, 
especially for those who follow the corrupt desires of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, they are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. I would say this, that it's not just in ministers that I see that trait, but sometimes I see it in people that are calling themselves believers. It's a trait to control and to manipulate. Be careful with that. Be careful with that because you don't want to be that person that is being a false prophet for your own gain or for your own understanding or for your own things that you can amass. Self-will sabotage unity. Self-will refuses to submit to God and our true authority and refuses to sacrifice or promote unity within the family of God. One of the things that I was always impressed about watching the military is their cohesiveness. Did they have fights that would break out? Sure they would. But there's something about the cohesiveness in the military. Whatever branch you're in, you have to listen to orders. You have to listen to orders. Or otherwise, when you get out on the field, it may cost you your life if you don't listen to the orders. And so the cohesiveness that begins to happen and transpire, the unity, you'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear many, if you're around people that have been in the military, they'll say, it's the brotherhood. It's, it's those people that you were in combat with, those people that you were in the trenches with, those people that you have, have done life with. I know my nephew, he's been in the military for quite a few years now, and, and he keeps signing up for a new tour. And every time he goes out, he's gone from his family for about 18 months at a time. And I think of the sacrifice that, that they make, but I think of the self-will makes unity impossible. As long as our preferences take priority over our purpose, unity will be impossible to achieve. The body of Christ can be divided by preferences. I don't like the song selection. His sermon was just too long. Or he says the same thing. Or churches split over issues on, on stupid things like the color of the carpet. When we finally put the eye aside and come into the sanctuary together into his name to lift up his son, to read his word, and to worship his presence. Preferences are forgotten as we all remember the purpose is all about him. The purpose for your life. The purposes that he wants to fulfill along with you. To be a co-laborer with you. The purpose that he wants to fulfill in your life and the things he wants to see in you. I think of Psalms 133, 3, it says this, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters in Christ dwell together in unity. For there the Lord commands a blessing, life forevermore. When unity exists, the blessings of God is guaranteed. Those blessings come when we sacrifice our will for His and where we lay down our lives for others. Just as in the military, they know that concept of unity of coming together. Acts chapter 2 verse 14 says this, the wind of the Holy Spirit blasted, well, let me go back. In this particular scripture, it talks about how there was 120 people gathered in the upper room. And Acts 2, 1 through 4 says this, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and the suddenly, did you see that one accord? They were in one place, all in one accord. In one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat on each, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. There's something about unity when the unity occurs, when we all get together, and that's what exactly happened 50 days after the cross. They were all gathered, 120 were gathered in an upper room, and they were there. They were there, they were, they were crying out, Lord, we're, we're here in unity, we're, wait, we're wanting, we're wanting more from you. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit came within them and, and, and rest on their heads even, and they spoke with other tongues. It goes on to say this, that in Acts chapter 2, uh, uh, 14, the day Peter, I call it this, the day Peter drops the mic. Because Peter goes out with the 11 disciples and it says, these men are not drunk as you suppose. 
They're filled with the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, 3,000 people were added to the church in one day. In one day. At one moment in time, 3,000 people were added just like that. I think of Acts chapter 3, verses 8. A lame man was running and jumping when Peter and John shared that they had <clears throat> what they had. And it says, I must submit to him. My self-will must succumb to sacrifice. His purpose must be the priority and the preferences and the desires of my heart. And only there will, will he command the blessing in your life. When you go all in in your life, there's something that happens that God commands a blessing in your life. When you come into unity and say, God, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm going all in for you. And God com commands a blessing. Just as, as we're moving in unity together as a congregation, there's something that begins to shift and begins to happen, and God commands a blessing because there's unity. The second form of laying our lives down and doing all and going all in is giving our time, our money, and our energy. Now, I'm not here to talk about your, your money, so take a deep breath, relax, nudge the person next to you and say, it's okay, let go of your purse. Okay, anyhow, but it says the story, you know, I think of the story of the Good Samaritan. Talk about a person who went all in. The story of the Good Samaritan shows, shows a picture of Christ to us. I mean, it says that a, a man of the, of the law went around this man that was dying in the street. He went around him. He neglected him. Saw him laying there and he just walked on the other side. It says a priest did the same thing. The rabbi came along, saw him laying there and he just kept walking distance himself from this man who was laying on the street dying and that says but then there was a good Samaritan that came along and saw the man lying there and bleeding he went over and he poured in oil in him he 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 was bandaged up his wounds he put him on his donkey he took him closest the nearest inn. he paid the innkeeper money to keep the man until he recovered and he said when I come back through this way I'll repay you for whatever the cost is that he incurred you see, not only did it take him his time, it also cost him his money and his energy. Didn't it? You see, when we go all in for Christ, that's, that's, that's laying a part of your life down. When you're, giving, when you're giving your time, when you're giving your money, you know, when I go to work, when I, when I do even a design job or whatever, I, I, I think I'm putting time in to receive money so I can take my money and I can invest it in other people and other things so I can invest time when I give money to missions. Time for people to hear the gospel in another country. Think about that for a moment. That's why they say time is money and money is time. I recall when I was when I was 40 and um, we've got a holy roller back there and uh, <laughs> cups rolling down the hill and 40 years old and, and many of you lived through this with me I, I fell down a flight of steps and um, broke my arm in several places and they had to put a plate in and rebuild an elbow and I got a bionic elbow, and it's just weird. And in the midst of all that, I had made commitments because I had a design company, and I had designed this lady's wedding, and, um, and I could not keep the commitment, and I was really concerned. And I'll never forget Susie DeBeau said, we can take care of that for you. And I don't remember everybody that was there that day. I remember Brad and Angela were there. I remember the Kings were there. Uh, Bob and Susie DeBeau were there. I, I, think, I think Daniel and Tammy were there. Um, there may have been other people as well, but they all went to this hall, this reception hall, and they brought their cell phone, and I had on my lap in a hospital bed, and they took all the decorations, and I, and I already had it laid out on a map anyhow, and they decorated the entire place for the wedding, and... Um, so I could keep my commitment to that bride and didn't let her down on her big day. But then when, they, then when the, the check was made out, instead of them taking the, the, the payment, they brought the check back to me and gave me the check. And I said, 
I don't know, you, you guys did all the work. You, you, guys, you guys do it. And they said, no, this is a way that you supplement for your family. And they gave me the check, and I was blown out of the water. But what it taught me that day is somebody laid down their life. They laid down their time for me. They laid down their energy for me and my family. And I'll never forget that. I will never forget how somebody else subbed and substituted that day to be a blessing to me and to my family. I also recall we had a contractor here at the, at the church at the time, and, and um, it was a couple years later, and um, he did motocross, and he, he, he got in a bad accident, broke his arm, and, and messed up his hand, and, and he couldn't complete a, a job within a certain period of time, and, um, and it was going to break up his contract. And a bunch of guys from the church got together, and they said, we're going we're gonna to finish the project for you. And they did the same thing. They went out, they finished the project, they finished building the garage, and then they brought him back the check for him and his family. And I was so impressed by that. I, I remember, I, I'm not much of the builder, I'm more of a designer, but um, I remember bringing pizza out that day to them that were building and, 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 and pop and water. And, and I said, here, guys, take a lunch break. It's on me for doing this for somebody else you see that's part of laying your life down when you see somebody else in need and you know it's going to cost you your time ladies when you make a meal for somebody um, I, I would say maybe there's some guys that are good cooks as well but uh, I'm not a good cook so I can't say that but uh, you know maybe if you made a meal for someone and you, you brought it to them because you found out they just got home from the hospital or you brought the meal to their family because you knew they were in the hospital and the kids and the spouse was at home and you knew the spouse maybe just was getting home from work and you wanted to be a blessing to them. That's part of laying your life down. When you're doing something for somebody else, you're doing it for another brother or a sister in Christ. See, that's what it's talking about, another part of laying something down for them. They were laying down their lives for their brothers and sisters in Christ. They laid down their time their money, and their energy. To be in community of faith means that the needs of other believers always come first. It's not just about being friendly and being neighborly. It's a relationship that requires personal sacrifice and commitment. It's not that you demand it from others. Can I hear an amen there? It's not that you demand it from others because love is not self-seeking according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Matter of fact, let, let, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4, 4 through 8. It says this. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It is not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Love never fails. The third thing that we're laying down, and this is the last thing this morning. The third thing we lay down is just as the soldiers, many soldiers through our history have laid down their lives for our freedom and for our country. Christ laid down his life for you and for me. Amen? I can't think of a more unselfish act as I think of the men and women in history that have laid down their lives for our freedoms and for, for the other, and others' freedoms as well. I think of our military, many of those like my nephew, like I said before, spends 18 months on, away from his wife and children on a tour. They are both laying down their lives for our country. She's at home with two kids. She doesn't get to be with, with, my, with my nephew. And yet he's overseas. Now there for a while, I don't think she minded because she got to stay in Honolulu, Hawaii. But I think that got old after a while. When she had two kids crying, missing their dad, and dad's gone for 18 months you know I think we sometimes forget the sacrifice 
that those military families make. I love that Michigan has, a, has set up a, a program that when our military come home and before they go back into life that they actually send them for a three-day retreat up north, just them and their spouse, and it's to reacclimate them back into our society and back into community because it's a, it's a different world coming back from, from where they've been and what they've seen and what they've been involved in. So I applaud, our, I applaud our state for doing that, for our military. Let us not forget, there's also the men and women in blue. There's also our firefighters. I mean, think about them. They, every one of them risk their life on a daily basis for us. John chapter 15, 13 says this, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Of course, our model in history is Jesus. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says this, and I close with this last scripture. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Before you were ever born, he knew you. Before he knew the, the mess that you might make of your life and that I might make of my life, he knew us. And he still loved us in spite of it. He still created us in spite of it and still laid down his life for us in spite of it. All because he loves us immensely. Because he loves us immensely. And I would challenge you here this morning, if you've never received Christ into your life's journey, today's your day. Say, Jesus, I believe who you are. Come into my life today and join me in this journey of life. I need you. And when you do that, my friend, the Bible says that he comes in. He washes all your sin away. What is your sin? Your sin is, I mean, I can't name all the sins this morning, but... You know, the word sin there is not just talking about just grievous things. It's also talking about your shortcomings, your faults, your failures, your addictions. Huh? And the Bible says that he comes into your life and he cleanses you from all unrighteousness. And he gives you a brand new start, a brand new slate. And if that's you this morning and you want to start that relationship, I want to send you a, I want to send you a book. It's, I can email it to you. All you have to do is just text Jesus to the number 989-625-9300 and we want to send you that book. And I want to just follow up with you for the next six weeks to make sure you're doing all right in your newfound faith. So if you do that this morning, that'll tell me that you were here, that you did that, you made that decision, and that way I can connect with you because I really care about your soul. Someday you're going to stand before God and I hope you're standing before God. I hope you're in the future and you're in heaven with our Father who desperately loves you. Let me give you these questions this morning. These questions is, number one, do I take it for granted when others do things for me? Now think about that for a moment because I know when we were kids, it was easy to take things that mom and dad or somebody did for us for granted. Isn't that you just expected mom to have the meal on the table. And when it wasn't, you're just like, what's wrong with mom? Where's mom? Or I remember coming home from school and my wife and I were laughing about this the other day. It was nothing to have a bowl of cereal when we got out from school because our parents weren't home yet. But do you think my son and daughter wants to have a bowl of cereal when they get home from school? They're texting us. What's mom making? What are we having for lunch? Well, son, didn't you have lunch money? <laughs> but how many times do we take people for granted in our lives that do things for us and we just take them for granted? When they're investing their time, their money, and their energy, even if it's sending you a card of thanks or giving you a birthday card. By the way, thanks for the birthday cards. I'm another day younger. 
And, um, but you know, let's not take people for granted. Number two is this. How can I give my time to help others? How can I give my time to help others? How can I lay a part of my life down and say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to give my time to serve other people once a week, twice a week, once a month. Start somewhere. And then ask the Lord to open the door and, and begin to look at those opportunities around you where you could begin to serve and help others. Number three is this. Would I be willing to lay down my life for my friends? Would I be willing to lay down my life for my friends? That's pretty heavy. There's a few friends. They're on their own. <laughs> Come on. There, there, are, there are relationships and friendships that you have. I'm just being real with you today. And you think, I would give my life for them. I would get, I'd lay down my, my life for my family. I'd lay down my life for my close friends. Even there's some extended friends that I would give my life for. But then there's some other friends. I really got to ask the question, God, you want me to do what? Come on. So ask yourself this morning, would I be willing to lay down my life for my friends? Because sometimes it's not your physical life. Sometimes it's just your time. Sometimes it's your money. Sometimes it's your energy for your friend. Would you stand with me today? prayer response team members are going to come and they're going to be down here to pray with you and our elders are going to be here to pray with you today if you have a need in your in, if you need a healing today they're going to be here to heal bring healing they're going to be here to administrate and administer that healing to you today through jesus maybe maybe you just need peace of mind today maybe you you just need direction Whatever that is, you can come down and pray with them today. They're going to be here to pray with you about those things. For the rest of us today, Lord, I just thank you that you bless us on our coming in. You're blessing us on our going out, lying down, and our rising up. Lord, everything we put our hand to this week, God, I just thank you that it's blessed. I just thank you, Lord, that we will see the needs around us. We'll be aware of the needs and the people around us. We'll always extend grace. We'll always extend love and mercy. Because we know that whatever we sow, that also shall we reap. And God, we thank you for that this week. We thank you, Lord, that we know that we are loved, we're accepted, that we belong. And we know that you have a purpose for our lives. And that you want to co-labor with us. So thank you for that today, Lord. Bless our military, bless their families. Protect our military around the world protect them, keep them and most of all let your spirit abound in every one of them, may they all come to the knowledge and the truth and the Savior Jesus Christ from the top all the way down and from the bottom all the way up in Jesus name be with their families that they're separated from, be with their families minister to them as well help us when we know that there's a family that's separated like that because they're in military help us to be a blessing to them as well in jesus name everybody said amen amen god bless your week god bless your day we'll see you next sunday